Am I good? Hey, welcome to VBS, day two. Are you excited to be here? Let's hear from the kinder. Are you excited to be here, kindergarten? All right, that was, that was impressive. First and second, are you excited? That's what I like to hear. Okay, third and fourth, are you excited? All right, what about fifth and sixth? All right. Well, welcome back. First of all, let me ask you some really important question. Can you dig it? Uh, no, let me ask again because I don't think you guys can dig it. Can you dig it? I can dig it. Yeah, all right. Are you ready for day two? Okay. Let's give our music team a warm welcome.
man, y'all are getting good at those dance moves, aren't you? I saw some really good dancers in here. Well, what is our motto for this week? Who can tell me? Seek truth, find Jesus, right? Yeah, third and fourth grade. I saw, I saw some other people knew it too, so y'all aren't the only ones, but y'all were the most emphatic, right? Y'all were the excited ones. And so what's our daily scripture today? Our daily scripture, our, our VBS scripture is Jeremiah 29, 13. So let's try it again. Repeat after me, okay? You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Do y'all need to do that again, or you think you have it? You got it? You got it? Okay, so I saw a few people come in with their school supplies. Who came in with some school supplies today, right? We're, we're basically like 3% of the way to me getting slimed. Who wants to see me get slimed this week? Man, I guess y'all don't really want to see me get slimed. Who wants to see me get slimed? Okay, well, I guess Pastor James is going to have to figure out where to buy slime, so hopefully he can't find it. But it'll be good, okay? Well, let's pray for today, and then we're going to, uh, our dig team will be coming up. Let's pray for a sec, though. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for Vacation Bible School and each person who's here. Please open our hearts to your word today so that we can learn more about you. Help us to seek truth and find you, Lord. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So who wants to see the dig team? All right. Uh, I don't know if they know we're here, so what I need you to do is chant with me. Say, dig team. Dig team. Dig team. Dig team. Dig team. Dig team. Hey, y'all. How are y'all? Give me a thumbs up if you're doing good today. Yeah, that's nice to see. So I know that yesterday we didn't find the Leviathan, but I still had a really awesome day. What about y'all? Did y'all have a good day? Was it fun? Yeah. But um, I was blown away by everything we found. I found out today that my parents are getting a new pool that I could go swimming in. It's gonna be so much fun. And I'm gonna start taking swimming lessons. I kinda wish I was at my pool right now, though. <laughs> Wait, did somebody say pool? Yeah, it was me. Pool? I said pool. All right. Well, your parents were telling me about this exciting use of swimming pool at your house. Yeah, but they just started building it, so it's gonna take a while. Okay, well, you might be surprised, but today we're gonna talk about some pool. What? No way. I'll be right back. Wait, what? Wait, what? No. She's gone. Well, not like, where in the world is she going? Right? That's weird. Well, anyway, good morning, junior archaeologists. Well, not good morning, sorry. Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Y'all doing all right? All right, cool. You all having a fun time yesterday? Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, today I hope you're ready because today was going to be another day of seeking truth at Destination Dig. In all my years of exploring, I'm amazed how all these treasures point back to the truth uh, that we find in the Bible. It's really incredible. Can you dig it? I don't know if you can dig. Can you dig it? Oh, wow. Yes, you really can dig it. Wow. Well, wonderful. Uh, so, you, And you'll soon learn that... I am ready for the pool. I took my hair down. I'm all ready to go. Okay. Well, dear uh, Sandy, it didn't actually mean that we're going to go to the swimming pool today, even though I said that it's... Today is about pool. Uh, the pool we'll be discovering today is very, very old. That's okay, Uncle. 
Old people can swim too. I'll give you a floaty. Well, thank you for offering. But that's not exactly what I meant. We have to be really careful around the archaeologist sites to ensure we don't disturb them. Oh, man. I guess I'll put my hair up in a minute. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. But I think you have just as much fun learning about really incredible miracle that happened in a certain pool. A miracle? Oh, yes. It was a miracle performed by Jesus. It even changed one man's life forever. And it shows us how strong and mighty God is. General archaeologists, we better begin our expedition today, all right? Let's do this. Seek truth. Find Jesus. F oh, sorry. <laughs> Find Jesus. Designation dig awaits. Bye. You know what? <laughs> if it is a pool, then that means there's water. Do you know what lived in water and maybe buried near the pool? The Leviathan. Okay, give our dig team a, hand, a round of applause. Yes, yes. Well, yesterday we saw a video where Zach was skeptical about the Bible, right? So today, let's see what awaits us in our video for today. What up, my peoples? Nash here, episode two of my archaeology week. So, last episode, it was pretty clear there was tension on the set. Zach seems determined to prove that archaeology proves the Bible isn't true. Sadie is determined to convince Zach that archaeology proves the Bible is true. For a second there, it looked like Zach was going to quit, but he's definitely staying on the team. Number one, his mom told him he couldn't quit. Number two, you'll see. Let's just say it gets interesting. So the team is working on their dig skills and the practice sites here at the camp. Well. Sadie's working on uncovering artifacts. Zach is, uh, building a sandcastle. I'm capturing it all with the Nash cam, and of course, Gidget. Maybe if you tried using your hands to actually do some work, we could actually find some. Hey, don't trash the tech. Archaeologists use drones and all kinds of tech these days. I brought out my awesome metal detector to help with the dig. Almost immediately, I had a hit. Zach dug up what looked like a really old coin. He was pretty excited. Sadie was doubtful. It was a fake. But Zach was pretty impressed with my metal detector. He had all kinds of ideas of becoming a treasure hunter and going on grand adventures. Can you imagine if someone 2,000 years ago solved this link? They'd probably think it was magic or something. That's it. That totally gives me an idea. Let's go see the professor. Hi, professor. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, oh, OK. Oh, okay. I hope that wasn't important. <laughs> this one time? So, Professor, what about the miracles that the Bible says Jesus did? Oh, right, your, your project. Go, go ahead. You got any archaeological evidence that the miracles in the Bible are true? Or could there be a scientific explanation for them? We found one of these coins using a metal detector. And if someone back then saw it working, they would think it's a miracle or some kind of magic. But it's not. There's a scientific explanation for it. Could there be a scientific explanation for the miracles in the Bible? And does it really matter if Jesus did all that stuff? Or could he just be a really good guy we could learn from? Those are really good questions. You know, archaeologists in Jerusalem, they uncovered an ancient pathway that they date all the way back to the time of Pontius Pilate. Guys, we're talking about like, like 31 AD. Archaeologists discovered over 100 coins that were buried beneath the paving stones of the walkway. And they used the coins to date the walkway all the way back to that time period. Which means that Jesus might have walked on that road. It, it starts up at the Temple Mount and it goes all the way down to the Pool of Siloam in the south. <laughs> it's so cool. And oh, the, the videos I have for you guys today of me and Barney. Come here. It says in Jerusalem, I, I think these videos will answer a lot of your questions. And go. This is the Pool of Siloam. The Gospel of John talks about this place. Until recent years, nobody really knew where the Pool of Siloam was. Then in 2004, work crews uncovered these steps and discovered the actual location John wrote about in the Bible. 
Water was super important in the Bible. Living in a desert area like Israel, water could be scarce. Hey, Barney, where's my water bottle? I thought I'd put it in here. Hey, can I have some of your water? Where are you going, Barney? You need to share. These types of pools were built to store water for the whole city. Where does the water come from? King Hezekiah made this tunnel to get more water into the city. You can read about it in 2 Chronicles chapter 32. Ugh, I don't like tight spaces. Barney loves them. Mm, cozy. The Bible tells us in John chapter 9 that Jesus healed a blind man and told him to wash in the pool of Siloam. And look, Barney is standing in the actual place. <laughs> hey, Barney, act like you're swimming. <laughs> That's awesome. Want to see more? This is the Sea of Galilee. This is where Jesus walked on water. But maybe it was a trick. Look at how easily Barney floats here. This is the Dead Sea. Well, it's not actually a sea. It's a giant salt lake. The Dead Sea is the seventh saltiest body of water on the planet. It has a salt concentration of 34%. This makes the water so dense that things float super easy. So is that how Jesus was able to walk on water? Nope, there ain't no salt in the Sea of Galilee. You can't float on these waters like that. Observe. Hey, Barney, go jump in the water to show them how you sink. What? I don't have my bathing suit on. I know, I know, but it will look so great on video. Maybe you should jump in. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm filming. That camera is what a pro? Barney, no, Barney. I'll, I'll mess up my hair, man. <sighs> yep, I did not float. This is believed to be Peter's house. You know, Peter. He was one of the first disciples. How do they know that this was Peter's home? Biblical archaeologists have been able to date the ruins to the time of Peter and Jesus. And there are writings on the wall that mention Jesus and Peter in Matthew chapter 8. The Bible tells us that Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law right here in this house. What do these locations reveal? They show us that the places where Jesus did miracles are real places. Plus, the miracles were written down and recorded by eyewitnesses. Did you guys know most of the eyewitnesses died for what they saw and said about Jesus? Why would somebody willingly die for what they know to be a lie? That doesn't make any sense. Jesus is either a liar, a crazy person, or listen, 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 listen to me, the Lord. The archaeological evidence, like the pool you saw Barney sitting in, supports Jesus being the Lord. We've got real places. We've got real eyewitness accounts of Jesus' miracles. Not to mention the fact that we've already established that our Bibles today are reliable copies of the original writings. Brush drop. So what'd you guys think? Yeah, but... So... What... <sighs> Professor, I don't know what to do. You're an expert on these things, and you can't even convince Zach. I'm beginning to wonder if all the archaeology in the world would be able to convince him. I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yes, archaeology supports that the Bible is true. But listen, there comes a point when a person has to put their faith in the truth. Don't give up. Okay, pray for Zach. And what I have planned for tomorrow, well, it's gonna be even harder for Zach to hear. The professor was right. The next day was epic. <laughs> Wow, wasn't it amazing to see all those places where things in the Bible happened? Yeah, and so today we're going to learn more about the Pool of Siloam. So please pay attention to your teachers and report back uh, to me about what you learn. Okay, guys? So y'all ready for the song of the day? All right, welcome our music team one more time.
Okay, it is time to start our expedition. Teachers, the first rotation starts at 6.05. You have 20 minutes for each rotation. So, guys, let's get going to our next destination.